Hey everybody, it's me, Dave Womond, and I just got a copy of my new book, Model School, that I worked on for the last year. I just got it in the mail, and the best part about getting a new book that you've worked on for over a year and poured your heart and soul and blood, sweat and tears into it, and get to see a reality and actually hold it in your hand. That's what is pretty cool. Um, this was a really different book for me to write because it was uh, about my... Uh, Childhood growing up in a small town after moving from a big city and going to middle school and dealing with bullies and all kinds of things. And I always try to choose, I choose to see the uh, funny side of life. Um, and uh, so things that seem terrible to you right now or not so great, maybe one day you'll see the funny side of it. At least that's what I hope anyway. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a funny book, but there are some more serious moments in it. And I thought rather than doing... Uh, reading of the book, I would uh, talk about what it's like to write about your own life and show you how I design characters for my real life. So um, I've a lot of the characters in here are based on uh, characters from my past. Um, certain characters like Lisa Giordano are a, a combination of different people. Um, and then some are actual real friends that uh, and teachers that I uh, had over the years, not necessarily all in middle school, but in different times of my life. So I tried to take different pieces and put it all into one big book and hope you enjoy it. So uh, if you had to write a book um, and design your own characters based on people from your life, who would you choose? What would you choose to write about? Would you write about a favorite teacher or maybe a group of friends that you hang out with? Maybe a friend did something wrong to you and you can uh, write about that. Or uh, bullies, um, you know, or maybe the lunch lady at the cafeteria. Who knows? You could write about anything. So as I go through this and talk about designing the characters that I did for model school, maybe you'll get some ideas and you can try designing some of your own characters. But anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Let's go. Okay, so one of the funnest things that I enjoy about um, designing characters is the rough sketches. This is where you can just let loose, have fun. It can be almost anything you want it to be. Um, you see, I've sort of got a guide there in the, on the left side of, the, of me uh, as a kid. So I'm kind of a tall, skinny kid, and uh, I didn't really look like that. They say one of the hardest things to draw is yourself. But, so I'm just doing the cartoon version of myself, which uh, is uh, pretty easy. You know, he could really be any kid, but that's sort of how I remember myself looking. And I used to have a big mop of messy hair. Yeah, believe it or not, at one time I did have hair. So my next character is a guy named Bad Brad, who's actually in the book. And here you see I'm drawing him. Uh, he, he's sort of like the the bully or the scary guy that I meet at the start. I think he's a bully, but he turns out he's really not a bully. But you can see I'm drawing him a head taller. So see the line where my head hits it? You have to draw him a little bit uh taller in every scene, a head taller. So I, you know, I was talking about drawing stick figures. You can see I'm um, almost drawing bigger shapes for him because I'm going to make him a little larger. Um, so as I said, he's a real character from my real life. I didn't actually meet Bad Brad in middle school though. I met him in college, but I decided to make him a character in middle school. So you can cheat a little bit when you write stories. So um, I, when I met Bad Brad, I thought, this guy is such a character. Sometime I have to put him in a book or cartoon or something. Uh, I think I mentioned in the book, he says, um, uh, it sounds like he's saying the word hut over and over again when he laughs. He's like, hut, 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 you know, things like that. I thought, one day we'll have to do an audio version and have him in a cartoon because he's a pretty cool guy. So anyway, uh, there's probably characters in your life that you could probably... Uh, uh, put in a book that you think, hey, you know, this guy or this girl would be excellent to write a book about or appear in a story. Uh, so yeah, now I'm just doing the uh, finished lines now over top of the pencil drawing. So if I was doing this on paper, I would um, just uh, erase after I was done, but I'm drawing this on the computer right now, so I'm going to go back in, I've done this on another layer, and then I go back in the bottom layer and erase all the pencil just to clean it all up. 
Um, and of course, I'm doing this a little bit faster than I normally would because there's a few things I want to show you here and we only have a certain amount of time. But you can see how I uh, will just sort of uh, try to keep the same energy as my pencil drawings. They call it like a gesture. You have to keep the same feel and flow if you can. Um, a lot of people tend to slow down and get real serious and tighten up when they do the drawing, but uh, I find if you just try to keep some of the flow going, it uh, looks all that much better. Um, and you can always go back in and clean things up too, like you don't have to worry if you make a mistake or anything. And I like to add a little bit of thicker lines and thinner lines just to sort of, uh, just to add some interest to the drawing and punch it up a little bit. So I'm at the point now where I'm going to go back in and start erasing all my pencil, um, clean it up a little bit underneath. Uh, some of the lines I kind of like because it gives a little bit of a added energy to it, but it's better to clean it all up. And now I can see where I'm sort of missed some of the details too. So I'm going to go back in with my ink pen and add some of the things that I've missed but once I clean it all up. As you can see, I forgot his smile. So you got to have that and then little folds in the clothing and everything. And we are pretty much good to go. Okay, so um, as I mentioned, muddle school was about my real life in uh, growing up in a small town. So I did my own family as well, and uh, I had to design characters for my own family. And again, I just did real rough, loose sketches, kind of like this for the mom, uh, for my mom. And uh, it, this is sort of how I, I would go and design her, just going by memory of when I was a kid, what she sort of looked like. And um, I looked through some old pictures, and I found out she was pretty pretty cool. She's a little bit hippie-ish, some of her clothing... Uh, that was the style back then, but it was kind of kind of cool to go through. And uh, rather than making her just a tr traditional mom, I made her a little bit uh, funky. So I don't know if she'll like that or not, but uh, that's the way I drew her. And um, yeah, my my dad also uh, some of the pictures I had of him, he he was sort of a he had the cool suit and the the uh, Clint Eastwood hair, and it was kind of fun. So anyway, you just see I'm doing like a stick figure, and then I'll slowly start to fill it out uh, once I um, get the general look that I want and the pose that I want. You can see I go back in and start adding a little bit of detail with the pencil, and then once you do your line, you do even more detail. So um, that's kind of the pencil sketches of the uh, of my family. And now you can see I've gone ahead and drawn the uh, the ink lines to save time. And now I'm going to show you how I add the color. So I just go and basically fill in flat color. And uh, for all the areas that I, as you can see, I'm hitting on the black line by mistake when you do it digitally. But if you're doing it on paper, you can just use crayon or paints or whatever you want to do. And then I add a little bit of a darker tone for a shadow, which I find adds a little bit of dimension. You can see I'm doing that on the faces and the arms, and it just sort of gives them a little more life to them, a little more depth. And I'll do that with everything once I, I add the color for the clothing. And you can play around with tons of different colors. That's what I like about digital colors. You can try all kinds of different things. So my dad always wore this suit. I always remember him wearing the red shirt, and he had sort of the blue leisure suit which you'll see if you read the book i i wear the leisure suit and i actually get beat up because i wore a leisure suit in the first uh first story but um yeah he sort of had the same type of thing though that was kind of a style then too like the light blue jean suit so i like to um i like to add some realistic things from the past some things that I, they actually wore and uh, then you can see I'm going to go through and add all the tones and little details. And then again, I'll go back and add the depth. As you can see, I'm just using a gray tone and another layer here. And if, I'm doing, if you're doing it digitally, that's a good way to add some tone. 
or some uh, depth to the drawing. And if you're doing it with paint, you just get a little bit darker color of the one, like say if, if you're uh, using light blue, just add a little bit more blue or black just to darken it up just a bit. And you can see I gave my mom blue hair. She's going to love that. She didn't really have blue hair, but it's a cartoon, so you can do whatever you want. Um, she actually had brown hair, but just, just for fun, I'm giving her blue hair just uh, just to shake it up a little bit. There we go. And now I've uh, designed the bullies here in the story. So originally these bullies weren't really a family and they weren't, uh, there wasn't a girl, it was all, it was three, three guys, but we just decided to change it and not make it the stereotypical bullies. We decided to have a little bit of fun with it. So we had the sister, little sister, who's the ringleader. And then this guy, I thought I'll draw him because he's sort of, uh, he's one of the butcher, butcher uh, family. And uh, he's just got a little bit of, I kind of like his pose and his leather jacket. And it's kind of fun to draw. So I thought I'd show you how I do the line work. And again, I'm doing on a separate layer just to give, uh, just so I can go over the pencil and try to keep the same energy if you can. Um, don't think about it too much. Just have fun with it. You don't have to worry about getting exactly right. And um, yeah, you can see this is the girl, in the love interest, the girlfriend that uh, Dave in the book wants to have. She's based on a not just one character, a group of characters. But um, yeah, I seem to, uh, I just sort of, uh, like to play with all different. Now I'm erasing, of course, in the background again, and I'm going to add color. So she's uh, not really a real person, but she's just sort of several people I've known in my lifetime. And same with uh, a lot of the characters. They're just, uh, and parts of the stories, there's there's things that happen at different times in my life, not all in middle school, and even some that happened to other people that I thought were kind of funny and I'd include in the story. Um, but uh, when you write about yourself, they always say, write what you know. So you, there's lots of material. So even when you're getting beat up and thrown in a mud puddle, like ha happened to me at the start of the story, you don't really think, huh, this is going to make a great story one day. This will be hilarious. You don't really think that at the time, but you can use all the stuff that happens to you in your life and put it in a story sometime. So there's that. That's a good thing, right? And again, see, I'm just going through and adding all the tones. And you can see how it sort of comes to life. It sort of pops off the page a bit more when you do it that way. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that. So that's my story and how I wrote Muddle School. But you see what this is? Some blank paper and a pen. I'm going to hand this over to you guys. And I can't wait to see what you come up with when you write your own story. Is it going to be... Just something funny that happened to you or maybe a bunch of funny things that combine into a story. Let's see what you can do. Have fun.